Hello again everyone, I'm Harry or HZRC and welcome back to another Pokemon Challenge video. This time, can I beat Pokemon Shield as a Team Yell member? The answer is obviously yes because I'm so good at Pokemon, come on. But this playthrough had some interesting moments and funny curveballs that made it a load of fun to play. As always, if you enjoy the video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe with notifications on to see when the next challenge video drops. Let's begin the challenge. Team Yell are 100% the least threatening bad guys in any Pokemon game, if you can even call them bad guys. Their sole purpose is to block routes and be loud and annoying. But that doesn't stop the opportunity to make an interesting challenge video using their team of dark type Pokemon. Throughout Pokemon Sword and Shield, Team Yell grunts use 9 different Pokemon lines, with some being more common than others. These are Nicket and Zigzagoon the most common, then Sableye, Lipard, Pancham and Stunky. Additionally, Scrafty, Weavile and Drapion are used by grunts in the Spike Murph Gym. You will have to watch the video to find out which, but I use 5 of these Pokemon lines in the video. Yes, using 5 different Pokemon did make this challenge fairly easy, but I wasn't playing this because it would be difficult. One last thing before we begin, let's run through the rules. I can only use Pokemon used by Team Yell grunts, and this doesn't include Pokemon used by Marnie or Piers. To make this more interesting, I can only use a Pokemon once I have encountered them in a battle with a Team Yell grunt, except for Nickit, which I will be using as my starter Pokemon. I also have to catch all these Pokemon myself, and I can't transfer them in from any other games. I can't use any glitches to progress with the game as always, and I can't use any items in battle except for held items. Okay, let's be a Team Yell grunt. Starting off, I chose the name Marnie Number One Fan because that's what it says on my birth certificate. There's no way these Team Yell grunts won't know I'm not one of them with that name. Let's watch the chairman do his introductory dance. It's then time to catch my starter on Route 1 and nick it. I tried to name it Sleep Deprived because of how tired it looks but it didn't fit so now I just have sleep deprive. Don't worry I'll change this later. Let's try look as much like a Team Yell grunt as I can from the first shot with some pink and black cloves. There, perfect. Now to grind up the Nickets level a bit before I battle against Hop. Going into the battle at level 10 I took out the Wooloo easily with a few quick attacks, but then I managed to lose to Hop in classic Team Yell fashion getting KO'd by a level 8 Sobble. I very good Pokemon player. Surprisingly here the game lets you progress even if you lose which I didn't know before. Thanks Game Freak for making this game easy for bots like me. Leon refuses to endorse me because I lost a hop. Then my mum disowns me and sends me away on a train. I get lost and have to eat a rotten apple just to survive the night. The next day I make it to Motorstoke and sell everything I own just so I can buy some better clothes. I then have to bribe my way into the gym challenge because Leon refused to endorse me. I then meet the lads in the hotel lobby but for some reason they don't recognise me after getting my hair dyed pink and want a battle. A battle against a Zigzagoon which means I can go and catch one after this battle. I taught Nick at Swift from the TM you are given in Wedgehurst and two attacks take out the Zigzagoon. Oh my god it's Marnie, I'm your number one fan! The Team Yell boys weren't convinced by my act so it's time to leave Mode Stoke and face the gym challenge alone. Hop thinks he can beat me again and challenges me to another battle. Out first is his Wooloo and it takes two hits from Snarl to take it out. PTSD from the last battle here but we take out the Sobble with a few hits from Snarl only losing a third of our HP. Last up is Rookadee which is taken out by two Snarls. Now who looks stupid Hop? Let's catch the second member of my team, a Zigzagoon which I appropriately nicknamed Zagzig. Very creative. Quick trip through Route 3 in the mines where Bead stops us for a battle. Having Psychic types has made this fight fairly easy with Solosis up first and getting taken out by two Snarls from Zagzig. Oh yeah, Nickit evolved but I forgot to record it and is now just known as Sleep. I send out Sleep and one Snarl takes out Hatina. Gofita is up last and one more Snarl wins us the battle. Bead should just join Team Yell to be honest, working for the chairman never seems to work out for him. Now it's time to take on the first gym. Here we go, I send out Zagzig first against Gossifleur. After a Snarl didn't do too much damage, I followed it up with a headbutt that did slightly more damage causing Gossifleur to flinch. Two more headbutt attacks and we take it out. Eldegoss is up last and I keep zigzagging to waste a turn of Eldegoss's Dynamax and try to deal a bit of damage. Unfortunately I am outsped here and get knocked out in one hit. Sleep is up and I Dynamax into a Max Darkness which only does minimal damage but lowered Eldegoss' special defence. Two more Max Darkness and we win the first gym. Milo hands us the Grass Badge and tells everyone watching to subscribe right now if you aren't already. Hey he said it not me. On to the next route I see some Team Yell harassing a poor medical worker and this really made me think. Is this what I'm living for? To be like these horrible people? 
Wow, I can't live like this. I need to teach them a lesson. Me and the boys wipe the floor with them and win the battles. Here one of the trainers has a Sableye which means I can now use one, but as it isn't foggy in the wild area until post game I won't be able to encounter one, so we just continue with the two. Hop is disappointed that he lost before and wants to do another battle. Even with two of his Pokemon evolved this time, Zigzag and Sleep have no problems winning this battle. Wooloo is taken to low HP and Hop cheats by using a potion, so I switch into Feeble to knock it out. Cobra Squire is next and taken out with two Snarls. And finally Drizzle is also taken out with 3 more Snarls. Hop for some reason is so happy even though he got slapped and runs off to challenge Nessa. We do the same and it's time for the water gym. While I am going through the challenge, Zigzag evolves into Linoon and learns Night Slash. It's time to take on Nessa and I send out Zagzig first. Starting off with Night Slash we get a critical hit taking Goldeen to under half HP. It takes one more Night Slash and we take it out. I keep Zagzig in for the Aracuda fight and two Night Slashes take it to minuscule health and a third attack is needed to take it out. With Zagzig on low health I switch to sleep for fighting Dreadnought and Dynamax immediately. Max Darkness takes off about a third of Dreadnought's HP but Max Geyser takes off half of sleep's HP. I go for a Max Guard here to waste a turn and Nessa goes big dum dum and uses Max Strike so I survive the attack and I manage to get another Darkness off. Sleep is taken out by sending Zagzig to finish the job with one last Night Slash, earning us the Water Badge. Chairman Rose invites me for a meal but I can't afford anything so I just eat the napkin and leave. We go into the next mine and Bede wants another battle again. I guess Bede just likes hanging out in mines or something. This time I have a Linoon which makes this fight even easier. One Night Slash takes out Solosis in just one hit. The addition of a Ponyta to Bede's team means nothing and two more Night Slashes take it out. Night Slash is so powerful this early into the game and I wipe through Hatina and Gothita with one hit each to win the battle. Feed like I said before, you can always join Team Yell, just hit me up yeah? I run into some Team Yell grunts and they don't like Hop, so I have to save him the embarrassment of losing again by helping him in a double battle. In this double battle the Team Yell grunts use both Lipard and Pancham, so after beating them I head to the wild area to catch two more lads for my team. I catch a Purloin and name it Dog, which is very funny for me as always. Back to Route 3 and I catch a Pancham and name him Panda X6 after that song. I obviously can't play it for you because this video will get claimed so let me read you some of the lyrics. Skra! Panda 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 pa Oh my god it's Marnie again wow 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 I'm such a big fan. Sorry but now you need to lose. Sleep is taken out in one hit by a Cruel Gunk so I send in Zagzig. Zagzig uses Retaliate and we take out the Cruel Gunk. Scraggy is up next and I send in Cat. Wait Dog. I managed to get two Swifts off taking Scraggy to half HP before being knocked out. Zagzig is sent back in and another Retaliate knocks it out. Last up is Morpeko and three headbutts from Zagzig takes it out to win the battle. And now it's fire gym time. During the challenge Dog evolves into Cat. No he's still Dog. Dog. Ninetales up first and I send in Sleep and use Nasty Plot to boost my special attack and Ninetales uses Will-O-Wisp to burn me. Thankfully burns only half your attack stat and not the special attack stat and a Snarl takes Ninetales down to low HP. One more Snarl and I take it out. Arcanine is up next and Sleep tanks another hit allowing me to take it out with a Snarl. Giving Mr. Sleep a rest I switch into Zagzig to fight the Center Scorch. Dynamaxing and using Max Darkness takes a quarter HP off it, but again special defense is lowered so the next attack does more damage taking it to yellow. Zagzig is knocked out here but I send in Dog to finish the battle. But Dog is a big slow noob and gets knocked out in one hit by Max Flutterby. Sleep is sent in to finish the job and one Swift wins the battle and earns us the third gym badge. It's time to head back through the wild area to Hammerlock. This guy stops to check if we have free badges, so I guess that means everyone that lives in Hammerlock has free badges right? So stupid. Wow very nice, good story, yes good, very good, yes good. I have a look here in the Hammerlock shop to see if there's any better clothes, but there's nothing good here for a big team yell lad like me, but I do change my hair back to black. After a bit more story, these Team Yell grunts don't want us stomping near this Silicobra. Team Yell is just so stupid, come on. <laughs> In this battle, the Team Yell dude uses a Stunky, which I decide will be my final addition to the team. After winning the battle easily with Panda's fighting moves, I head to the wild area to find myself a Stunky. Here's one, and I catch it in a level ball just because I can. Meet Stinky, the Stunky. Back to Route 6 and I rush straight through to Stone Side as I'm not that bothered about the XP from trainers now that I have 5 Pokemon. Before we can challenge the Ghost Gym, it's time for another battle against Hop. Cramorant has been added to his team here, but is no match for Sleep. 
I use Nasty Plot to boost my special attack and then knock it out with two snarls. There's a Silicobra up next and I wonder if this is the same one that we just saw in the Team Yellow battle before. Anyway, I switch into Panda to use a Vital Throw, which takes Silicobra right down to red HP. One more Vital Throw and we take it out. I switch into Zagzig and use Night Slash on the Toxel, taking it all the way down to red, but its static paralyzes us. Luckily, the next Night Slash lands and we take Toxel out. Now it's just Drizzle left and I keep Zigzag in. Zagzig. Zigzag. I just spam attacks here and a lucky critical hit takes it out to win the battle. Some strange old woman has been stalking me and hands over a picture of the gym leader in this town. I'm just a tiny bit worried. Before heading to the gym, I check what the market is selling and to my luck, it's Black Sludge, which I buy for Stunky to use. During the challenge, Panda evolves into Big Panda. I've never actually used a Pangoro until this run, so I was pretty surprised when it ended up being one of my best Pokemon, with a very high base attack stat and very tanky. It's time to fight Alistair and his ghost type Pokemon, which I ended up being extremely easy with my dark type team. I send in Lipard first and two Assurance take out Yamask. I kept Lipard in and used Assurance again, which broke Mimikyu's disguise while it used Hone Claws. Lipard takes off about half the HP here before it's taken out. I then send in my new Big Panda to knock it out with a Night Slash. Even though I probably could have kept Pangoro in battle here, I just switched out to Stinky because I wanted to use someone different, and Cursula is sent in next. Two Sucker Punches from Stunky take it out. Again, I do another switch here to Zagzig for the final Pokemon, and after Dynamaxing, one Max Darkness takes out Gengar to win us the 4th Gym Badge. Easy. After leaving the 4th Gym, we find a very angry Bead wanting to smash up the stone side mural. Time for another battle. This time we fight Bead before he switches to a fairy type team, so this is another easy battle for our dark type Pokemon. Duosion is sent in first and a super effective assurance takes it to low HP. Even with a super potion, one more hit and we take it out. Hatram is up next and an assurance takes it to quarter HP. Luckily Dog survives the fairy attack barely on 11 HP and we knock out Hatram the next turn. I keep Lipard in to see if I can take out Ponyta in just one hit here but it doesn't and we get knocked out. Sleep is sent in next turn to finish the job. Gopherita is the final Pokemon and goes down with two hits from Snarl. Bead is obviously sentenced to life in jail and we never see him again. Bye Bead, should have just joined Team Yell. Speeding through the Glimwood Tangle, we make it to the fairy type gym, which I expected would be pretty difficult here with the super effective weakness. I should have healed going in, which led to me losing my first battle to one of the trainers just before the gym. Wow, I'm really bad. Returning with a healed up team, we beat the trainer and Stinky evolves into Smelly. And it's time to fight that creepy old woman who turns out being the gym leader. I send out Skuntank first to use its poison type effectiveness, but this doesn't matter against Weezing. A Venoshock takes off just over a third of Weezing's HP, and Skuntank was able to attack one of the fairy moves pretty well, so I kept it in. I went for two more attacks using Flamethrower to take it out. The Black Sludge I got in Stone Side was really useful here and helped keep my HP up high. With Togekiss being sent out next, I Dynamax Stinky and used two Max Ooze to take it out. Moel was up next and being an idiot, I tried to use Max Ooze again, which obviously didn't affect it and my Dynamax ended. Thankfully, it only took one Flamethrower here to take it out the next turn. Big Pink Cake was no match for us and two hits from Venoshock take it out. Skontank was the clear MVP here and without a Poison type, I expect this probably would have been significantly harder. Even though I'm wearing some pink, Opal denies me the job of Gym Leader. But let's be honest, who would take it anyway? Fairy type Pokemon suck. Well, apart from Togekiss. Togekiss is the best. Back to Hammerlock and Opal pays for Bead's bail of $1 million on the condition that he takes over the fairy type gym. To be honest, I'd rather stay in prison. We leave Hammerlock and head towards the sixth gym and Hop asks me kindly to beat him in another battle. Hop, I don't know why you do this to yourself. Just join Team Yell like me. Big Dum Dum Me tries to use Fake Out on the first turn thinking Trevenant is a dark type, which obviously doesn't affect. A Sucker Punch isn't able to knock it out here, so Dog is knocked out the next turn. Zagzig is sent out next turn to finish the job with a Night Slash. Switching to Panda, two Vital Throws take out the Heat more. Stinky vs Inteleon, and I start off with a Toxic and then follow up with a Venoshock dealing a lot of damage. Skuntank is unfortunately knocked out, but has done his part, so Sleepy Boy is sent in to knock out the Inteleon with a Swift. Wow, that Snipe Shot does a lot of damage. Boltund is out last, and I keep Sleep in for the Doggo vs Doggo fight. Speedy Boltunt attacks first, taking out Feeble, so the Badger Zagzig has to finish the battle and he uses counter which does a lot of damage. A body press finishes off the battle. 
That actually ended up being a lot harder than I expected, but I'm trying to keep my Pokemon fairly low level so I don't just sweep through the entire game. Time to head through Route 8 to the next gym. I still stand by it, this is probably the best route in the game. Making it to Sir Chester because we were playing Sword, it's time to fight the Ice Gym. I begin by sending out Lipard first so I can start off with a Fake Out onto Frostmoth. For some reason it doesn't flinch here, which I always assumed Fake Out was 100% flinch. I guess not. This allows it to use Bug Buzz and takes out Dog in one hit. Next it's Stinky Time with its 4 times effective Flamethrower, which takes out Frostmoth in just one hit. Darmanitan was being sent out next so I kept in Gun Tank and went for a Dynamax. A Max Flare and then a Max Ooze take out the Darmanitan. One final Dynamax turn and Ice Q is taken out in one hit from a Max Flare. Just the Gigantamax Lapras is left and Flamethrower won't be effective again here but I keep Gun Tank in anyway. My goal was just to get Toxic off here before I get knocked out but surprisingly Gun Tank actually tanks the first attack very well. No pun intended. This allowed me to get Venoshock off before I get knocked out. I brought in Panda Panda Pan to finish the battle using a Vital Throw. This takes Lapras to just a third health but I wasn't able to knock it out, getting taken out by a Surf. With just a low amount of health left, I send in Sleep to finish the battle. Swift takes Lapras to red health and the poison from Toxic knocks it out, earning us the Ice Gym badge. Just two gyms left to go now and the most important one is next, the Team Yell Gym against Piers. I will finally be able to get the dark type uniform and become a real Team Yell member. I'm so excited to join Team Yell, it's been such a big part of my life ever since I was the age of 6, all I've wanted anyway. It's time for another battle against Hop. I swear that's all this game is, battling against Hop. I start the fight by sending out Panda first against the Dubwall and using a super effective Vital Throw. One more hit and I take it out. Dubwall is very useless as always. I keep out Panda against Corviknight which is probably a bit of a mistake and I only manage to take off a bit of HP before getting knocked out by a Drill Peck. Skuntank is sent in to finish the job with two Flamethrowers. I use Toxic on Snorlax to start off and then two Night Slash to take it low before the poison knocks it out. I use the time waiting for poison to knock it out to use a nasty plot and boost my attack going into Inteleon. Using Snarl takes off just under half HP before sleep is knocked out. Feeble is so bad seriously. <laughs> Zagzig is sent in next and a counter to Liquidation knocks out Inteleon, leaving just Pincurchin which is no threat. Famous last words obviously and Zagzig is knocked out before I even take Pincurchin to yellow. It's all down to Dogcat who wins the battle with an assurance. Now please go away Hop. It's now night time so I head to the wild area to level up Zagzig and evolve into Obstagoon. This allowed me to learn Obstruct which ends up being an extremely useful move as it protects and lowers the opponent's attack stat. I grinded up my levels a bit before going back to Sir Chester and continuing the 7th gym. Team Yell Dum Dums are harassing this NHS worker on his way to the shop. Hashtag save the NHS. So now it's time to smash them in a battle. These Team Yell grunts don't use any new Pokemon but I was planning on staying with my current team anyway. Panda vs Panda and Panda wins, nice job Panda Panda. Making it to Spike Murph, Marnie wants another battle. By this point Team Yell should probably be following me instead, I'm clearly the better trainer. Knowing there would be dark types, I send in Panda first to use some fighting moves. One vital throw and Lipard is taken out. Next up is Scrafty and I switch into the Stinky Boy to use Toxic. I completely forgot Scrafty has Shed Skin so this is healed almost immediately, but I use Venoshock twice before this happens taking Scrafty really low. This didn't matter at all though and Marnie uses a potion to heal. I continue with the Venoshocks and we take out Scrafty a few turns later. With more Peko being sent out next, I send in Zagzig to use a fighting type move. Two body presses and we take it out. Last up is Toxicroak and a cheeky TM Psychic I learned allows Sleep to take it out in just one hit. Into Spike Murph, the worst town in the game, I sweep through some Team Yell Grunts to reach the gym leader. As I mentioned at the start of the video, these Team Yell Grunts use Scrafty, Drapion and Weavile which I won't be adding to the team, as it's already pretty strong. But if you're doing your own Team Yell challenge, you may want to catch them here. I'm getting some serious attention now as a Team Yell Grunt, the two Grunts just jump out of their window just to get an autograph. Piers wants to initiate me into Team Yell by playing one of his classic songs, The Sound of Silence. I ask him if he can give me the badge just to save me a bit of time but he still wants to battle. Again I started off with Panda to use some fighting type moves and two vital throws take out the Scrafty. My stats have been lowered quite a bit here so for the next Pokemon I make a switch to Ziggy Stardust. 
Obstagoon versus Obstagoon and Pierce has an IQ of 1000 using Obstruct in the first round. Body Press doesn't do that much damage. I fall for his Obstruct again, lowering my defense further, so I switch back into Panda. Wow, Obstruct is annoying, and it causes me to not attack again, but thankfully it can't be used twice in a row, so a Vital Throw knocks out the Obstagoon. Fighting isn't super effective against Malamar, so a Vital Throw doesn't do too much damage here. I use Parting Shot to lower the defense and then switch into Zagzig. I use Obstruct to lower Malamar's defense here, but I forgot that his ability reverses it so it gains some defense. This doesn't matter though, and using a counter next turn knocks it out. Skontank is the last Pokemon, and obviously I have to send in Stinky to have the one on one. I flamethrow my way to victory and earn the 7th gym badge. Piers officially declares me a member of Team Yell, and a grunt gives me the dark type uniform to wear. Before I can change into my Team Yell uniform, I find out Leon is blowing some stuff up on the bridge outside Spike Muff. After going to stop it, Hop tells me he did the whole thing just for a selfie. Leon must be stopped. I head back to Hammerlock to put on my Team Yell uniform and prepare to save the world from this madman Leon. I need a few more pieces of clothing from Winden, but then I'll give out the trainer code for anyone that wants it. I still have one more gym badge before I can stop Leon, so I head to the Hammerlock gym. I start the battle by sending out Sleep and Zagzig first. This allows me to use Obstruct to reduce the defense and I use Snarl to hit both Flygon and Gigalith. With the reduced defense, I use Body Press to take Gigalith low and then another Snarl to take it to red HP. Sleep gets taken out by a breaking swipe, but another Obstruct takes Flygon's defense even lower. I bring in Cat Dog to use Fake Out and it does a crazy amount of damage because of the lowered defense, causing Flygon to flinch and not use a breaking swipe this turn. This lets my Obstagoon use Throat Chop and take it out. Wow, that Flygon is so annoying in this battle. Sandaconda is sent in and I need to be careful what I use here because Glare can paralyze my Pokemon. I tried to use Fake Out on Sandaconda, but obviously it won't work because it's not the first turn. Idiot. And I try taking out Gigalith with a Body Press. Zigzag ends up getting paralyzed here, which could be annoying. Next turn, Giraladon is sent in and Gigantamax is using Max Knuckle, which takes out Zagzig. Dog is also now paralyzed, so I use U-Turn to switch out and bring in Panda to Dynamax. A max knuckle onto Duraladon takes half HP off and I bring in Stinky to replace Dog. One more max knuckle takes out Duraladon and the danger is gone, just Sandaconda remains. I finish the battle with a max knuckle to take it out, earning the last gym badge. It's time to stop Leon and head to Winden. With all my new Team Yell money, I buy a nice new jacket and make this amazing trainer card. What a disaster. If you want this mess of a trainer card, here is the code. Time to take on the Pokemon League if you can even call it that. The first battle here is against Marnie and this is to decide who will lead Team Yell. Starting off against Lipard, I send in Sleep which wasn't the best. We both go for nasty plots here to boost our attack and then I use two Snarls to take Lipard to low HP. As always Marnie cheats and uses a potion. This is why I should lead Team Yell. Because I don't cheat like some people and use potions, Sleep gets taken out here but not before I can take Lipard down to red HP. I send in Doggo to finish the battle with a U-turn. Obstagoon is sent in to fight Scrafty and I go for a counter which destroys it in one hit after taking me to low HP. Toxicroak uses Toxic but my new TR Zen Headbutt takes that out in one hit. I keep Panda in the fight against Morpeko and I use a Max Knuckle that takes it out in one hit. Last is G-Max Grimmsnarl and a Max Knuckle takes half HP before I'm KO'd by Starfall. Stinky is sent in to win the battle with two Venoshocks. Time to beat Hop because we haven't done that enough already. I take out Dubwool in the first turn with two hits from Snarl, and then Snarlax is sent out so I switch to my Panda. A Vital Throw takes it to just a slither of health and Hop uses a potion. Two more Vital Throws and I'm able to take it out. Corviknight is sent out next and knowing that it will probably use Drill Peck here, I used a counter. It didn't end up doing as much damage as I expected, so I used Throat Chop a few times to knock it out. With Zigzag low, I keep it in to use Obstruct and lower Pincurchin's defense. Throat Chop does a bit of damage and then I get taken out. I switch to Skuntank and two Night Slashes take that out. Last up is Dynamax Inteleon. I Dynamax Skuntank for the extra HP and use Max Ooze twice before getting KO'd. My Pokemon are all on low HP here, so I had to think how I could win. I sent out Dog and used U-Turn before taking it to low HP. Then I sent in Panda as a sacrifice just for one move. Finally, I brought Dog back in and used Fake Out to get the priority and win the battle. 
Next I have to do that wild goose chase where I chase for the guy with the keys. So I'm going to cut to the chase here. Me and the team Yell Boys take out all of the macro cosmos and I make it to Alina for a battle. Starting off I send out Dog and I use a U-turn to switch into Stinky. Two flamethrowers take out the Frostlass and then I switch into Panda to fight the Melotic and use Darkest Lariat to take off half the HP. The second attack takes it out. Switching back to Skuntank here and two flamethrowers take out the T-Serena. Using Zagzig I throat chop twice to beat the Salazzle. It's back into Panda to fight the last Pokemon Garbodor. We both Dynamax and I use Max Mindstorm to take it to red HP. It takes one more Max Mindstorm but we win the battle. I managed to get past Oleana here and I see Leon just before the evil mastermind runs away and the Chairman Rose can grab him. Unbelievable. It's back to the gym challenge and it's time to fight Bead. I use U-turn and switch into Stinky to fight Mowile. One flamethrower and we take it out. Rapidash is sent out next and I go straight for the Dynamax using Max Darkness, but with my big fat fingers I accidentally press Max Flutterby here. It doesn't actually end up mattering because the critical hits and knocks it out anyway. Next up, the Gardevoir actually manages to outspeed us and a Dazzling Gleam knocks out Panda, so I send in the Stinky. I use a combination of Toxic and Venoshock to knock it out. Hatron is out last and I switch to Zagzig to use Obstruct and waste a turn. I then switch to Sleep and use the Shadow Ball which wins us the battle. And now it's the return of the Water Type Gym Leader. To start the next battle I use two Night Slashes causing Gazillapod to emergency exit. Sea King is sent out next and it knocks out my dog with a Mega Horn, so I send in Sleep to finish it off with a Snarl. With Gazillapod being sent back in, I keep my Sleep in and try to use a Psychic, but First Impression takes priority and knocks us out. Stinky finishes up the job with a Flamethrower which burns and takes it out. Just a few Pokemon left, so I Dynamax Skuntank and use a Max Ooze twice to take out the Barascuda. One more Max Ooze and I take out the Pelipper in one hit. Dreadnought is up last and I use a Toxic before getting knocked out. Zigzag uses Obstruct here and then is knocked out the next turn so it's just Panda left. Panda is able to come in clutch and wins the battle with a Vital Throw. That ended up being a lot closer than I expected it would be. Alistair and his Ghost type Pokemon were no match for us in this battle and I knock out each of his Pokemon with Darkest Lariat before Dynamaxing and using Max Darkness on the Gengar to win the battle. It's just Raihan left and I always find this team easier in this single battle. I take out the Torkoal first using Vital Throw several times and then switching into Dog for the Turtonator. I use Fake Out and then a U-turn to chip off a bit of HP before sending in Skuntank who gets one hit KO'd. Whoops. Zog uses Obstruct to lower his defense and then takes out Turtonator with two Throat Chops. To beat the Gudra I switch to my Dog Cat and I use two Play Roughs. I then do the same against Flygon which knocks that out also. It's just Duraludon left. I switch to Panda and two Max Knuckles win us the battle. Wow those battles ended up being such a slog. Chairman Rose appears on the big screen and tells me he's found Leon, but I'll have to battle him to find out where. What a nice guy. I start the battle by sending out Stinky and I use a flamethrower to take it to low HP, but then I get completely destroyed by a drill run. I send in Panda to finish the job with Hammer Arm. I switch into Obstagoon and use a Body Press to take off half HP, but then the Chairman uses an Uno Reverse card and knocks me out. Panda is sent in and I Dynamax to knock it out with a Max Knuckle. I then continue using Max Knuckle to sweep through the rest of his team until just Copperaja remains. With my boosted attack from Max Knuckle, one Hammer Arm smashes it to the ground and we beat Chairman Rose. After winning, he tells me that Leon is headed to the roof and is playing something real bad. Thanks Chairman. Leon releases an evil Pokemon upon the land and it's my job to stop it. Done. The best sick Pokemon for any Team Yell member like me. I'm joking, I'm joking, straight to the box you go. Now for the big one, it's time to finally stop Leon and his madness. My team is fairly under leveled here so this battle took me several attempts to beat, and as this video is already super long, I'll just show you the winning run. I send out Zagzig first to use Obstruct so Aegislash switches form. A super effective hit from Throat Chop takes it out. After having a bit of trouble and losing a lot of Pokemon to Seismitoad in my previous attempts, I switch to Dog and I use 2 Night Slash to take it to low HP, and that allows me to bring in Sleep to finish the job. Nope, Leon ends up being a big cheat like his brother and uses a potion here. I end up doing a bit of damage but Sleep is eventually taken out. I send in Zagzig to lower his defense with an Obstruct before taking it out with a Throat Chop. 
Before this attempt, I bought TM Ice Punch to deal with the dragons and taught it to Panda. So here I use Max Hailstorm to take out Haxorus in one hit. A Max Darkness ends up one hitting Cinderace, which I did not expect. And then a final Max Darkness ends up taking out Dragapult, and just Charizard remains. Panda is on pretty low HP here, so I keep him in so he can tank one of the max moves before getting knocked out. Stinky is sent in next to use Toxic before getting taken out the next turn. This leaves just Zagzig to come in and use the ultimate counter, one hit KOing the Charizard. Nope, obviously Charizard uses a special move and it fails. I do end up winning, but it does turn into a bit of a mess. I luckily avoid a Fire Blast that would knock out Zagzig and then hit Charizard with a Throat Chop, taking it down to yellow HP. G-Max Wildfire's effect takes Zagzig low, but so does the poison. And to win the battle, I pull out an Obstruct to stall out the turn, letting the poison knock Charizard out. And with that, we have beat Leon and finally put an end to his reign of terror, and Team Yell takes over the Pokemon League. There we have it, I ended up beating the game fairly easy with my Team Yell team, but it was a lot of fun. If you have another challenge you want me to face next, make sure to leave it down in the comments below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. Make sure to check out my other challenge video if you haven't done already where I beat Pokemon Sword with only a Bulbasaur. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next challenge video. Goodbye.